Do we have anyone with us? Okay, if we're ready to get going, I will get going. Okay, hey folks, thanks for being here. Um, I'm just going to kind of give you a real quick overview of what this what this is. <clears throat> You're going to have an opportunity to get some straight answers directly from me. Um, it'll help build your <clears throat> knowledge and your confidence in the grants process. Uh, not just the process, but also the ability to locate those dollars and um, apply to the right agencies and eliminate a lot of the guesswork. Um, I'm going to kind of introduce you to the grant world with some of the language. I'll show you what the difference between a grant is, a contract, and a cooperative agreement. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you uh, where to search for grants. And um, later on, if you if you continue to uh, to follow us, I'll provide you with direct links to the you know the precise agencies that, that provide these grants. Um, so uh, in the interest of complete transparency, I wanted everyone to know that uh, I recently had complete knee surgery. So I'm uh, a little, you know, just kind of off balance here and that kind of stuff. So I just want to let everybody know that happened on Monday. Um, so my name is Ola Northern, and I'm uh, really happy that you decided to give us a try. Um, we want you to feel comfortable in in the grants arena because it can be uh, quite intimidating. Um, I worked for the federal government for over 30 years. I retired as a contracting officer and a grants officer. Um, and in that time, I awarded hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to folks just like you um, seeking money to try a, try a new business, um, to do something that they really cared about, uh, something in their community, something for the environment, you know, whatever, whatever um, specific or specific uh, niche you guys have, uh, I'm sure there's a grant out there for you. Um, I, uh, I worked for the Department of Defense uh, the majority of my career, and um, they are the ones that have the most federal dollars for contracts and grants and cooperative agreements. Um, so let me stop right there and just uh, kind of divide what what these three elements are. A contract, a contract is a legal instrument that's memorialized that does kind of kind of a quid pro quo. The government wants something and they're willing to pay for it. You have either the expertise to provide it, or you have the supplies or a construction. So it's kind of a quid pro quo. A grant, on the other hand, is where the government gives you something of value. It can be land, it can be money, it can be equipment, something to that effect. Um, and they typically do it uh, with the expectation that you're going to provide something um, for them. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more of that later. And then there's a cooperative agreement. A cooperative agreement is also a form of a grant, but there's more uh, government involvement. Um, it typically does stuff like environmental or research and development where uh, the government wants the data or they might want, um, you know, the an area uh, that maybe the Department of Defense used. Uh, they want that area cleaned up so that they can, um, you know, give it back to the folks uh, that owned it or uh, grow things that, you know, currently they can't because they've contaminated the soil for some reason or somehow. Um, in my career, I also uh, worked with policy and procedures, and um, I had an opportunity to look at it from a different perspective um, while while still doing the the grant work and the you know the heavy lifting. Um, I had a chance to look at how unintended consequences are written into policy and um, and regulations where it affects the guy you, you know, the person who's applying for it, um, where the, where the policymakers are way up here in Washington, DC, and they have no idea. And I, I guess we can all kind of relate to how that works uh, in this day and age. Um, but we did what we could to try to eliminate a lot of the unintended consequences by trying to follow the flow down. Um, one of my duties 
was um, when I was working in both areas was uh, I would assist folks like you that had already applied. And we do that by what's called a debrief. Um, someone would put in an application or, uh, or a proposal. Um, once again, a proposal is something in response to a solicitation for a contract. An application is something for a grant or cooperative agreement. Um, but I would assist them in, because they would always want to know, well, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? Um, what can we do next time to improve our chances? Um, and we don't want to eliminate the things that we did right for next time. Um, so I would walk through, you know, walk through that with them step by step. And those, um, those sessions were invaluable to most of the, most of the applicants because it gave them an inside view. Um, you're getting a very rare opportunity to hear it from somebody who actually was, um, behind the scenes working on the other side. Um, and I'm, I'm the one who actually, uh, award, make those awards or not make those awards. And I would also uh, eliminate you from the process early on by various mistakes in which we cover how to eliminate those mistakes. Um, nothing more frustrating than working six months on, a, on, a, on an application for a, for a grant or a cooperative agreement, only to find out that you were eliminated within five minutes of them receiving your your application because you did something that was, you know, uh, that, would, that would disqualify you. Um, so these, um, these out briefs would often, debriefs would often allow them to become more competitive as they would start seeking higher and higher um, numbers of dollars and maybe even spreading out uh, for multi-source uh, funding, which we'll cover a little bit more about that later. Um, I decided to do this kind of as a selfish thing um, at first because I, I wanted to do it while I still work for the federal government because I felt like if, if you're providing me a better proposal, then I don't have to, how can I put it? I'm not wasting my time. Does that make sense? Um, and then, uh, and then, whenever you put in a proposal, you're going to prevent, you know, you're going to put in something that's much more um, innovative and, and a, a new thinking solution, which is going to cause your competitor. So, in other words, it would help us get um, the cream of the crop by by providing a debriefing and saying, hey, you, know, you did really good here. You could probably use some um, some assistance here. Uh, Unfortunately, at that time, I was only authorized to provide limited uh, feedback, and that's why I decided to not do it um, at that particular time. Plus, it was uh, it was a con it was considered a conflict of interest because it would look like I was favoring uh, one agency over another. And um, the if I'm if I'm providing too much assistance to one person, um, somebody who either didn't compete or um, or did compete, but they weren't awarded or it would just, it, it had the appearance of impropriety. So the amount of information I was authorized to get back was limited. And then, and I also was un, I was not, I was basically, I was prohibited from, uh, going outside and doing it on my own time, um, because of the same reason, um, it, it would give the appearance that I was favoring somebody. So I, I thought long and hard and I thought, you know, maybe I should just retire and then I can do this and it will help folks get, um, do better. Cause there's a lot of people that are getting money that probably shouldn't and you should probably get it or as they shouldn't, but they've been getting it because, uh, just like anyone else, you know, they get complacent. They, um, uh, the, the federal agencies, they look at it and they're like, well, uh, we're just gonna, we know these guys are qualified in all these areas, so we'll just give it to them. It makes it easier, right? Well, not really. It, it, it does, uh, in, in the upfront, but the problem is, is that you, you still get the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, so I would have to, you know, I, I would basically have my hands tied. Um, 
getting back to multiple funding uh, sources, uh, I'm going to cover something else real quick. Um, a lot of the people that put in for these grants and cooperative agreements, they live in your community, right? They, they're right there with you. And um, so it makes it, um, it makes it more valuable to provide these dollars to somebody that it's that, that these things are going to happen in your community. Um, and on that note, uh, I'm, I'm going to just touch a little bit on multiple sources and then Tyler's going to play a clip for you. Um, multiple sources. It's, it's kind of an interesting concept, but you might have an idea that might touch on the small business administration, the EPA, and the health department. Those are just, you know, I, I'm just throwing these out there. But for your one idea, you might have something that all three of these agencies are interested in funding. Now, just real quick before Tyler plays the clip, I want to let you know one thing. Um, there's no such thing as free money. Uh, I want to make sure we dispense with that right now. Um, the government is always going to want something in return. They're, they're the funding agency, they've got the money. Sometimes it's nothing but political clout. They might want to be able to, to go up to Congress and say, look what we did in your, in your area, your voting sector, or, um, or a pat on the back. Hey, you know, you really helped these people out when they were, you know, so, and then it comes time to voting, you know, for your new, you know, for your congressman. Well, hey, you know, look at what this guy did for our community. So it could be something as small as that, or it could be something um, as large as, uh, you know, you're going to do some research and, and the, maybe you're going to do some research in the DNA sector and the government wants that data so that in case they decide to uh, do another grant, cooperative agreement or contract, um, they can do that and have that data belong to them. So without further ado, I'm going to turn that over and have Tyler play the clip. Everything that you're going to be doing, everything that your app is going to be doing that will that will fit into this little niche, apply it and use it in your application. Same thing with the small business and same thing with um, DOT. Is that any help at all, Josh? No, yeah, that's absolutely a help. Um, I, I'm, <laughs> so I'm kind of, guess, been on the opposite side of the fence for most of my years in building businesses, and I'm, I'm what you might call a bootstrap bill. I like that. That's even better. <laughs> so, so that's yeah, kind of been my MO. <laughs> that's been my MO in 10 years of business that I'm, and I've done it several times where, uh, you know, somebody handed me a license, a business license, an EIN, a bank account with $20,000 in it and whatever we needed to function in that business legally. And uh, scale and built it to a multi-million dollar business right nice because okay. that, i just that's that's what i'm passionate about doing right that's my what, what how my mind works and stuff so yeah. grant the word grant i guess has always been like a bad word in a way because free money you know what i mean but hearing you say that no money is free and they all want something um yeah, it's honestly changed my mindset about it a lot because I remember being a smart way transportation partner and having to spend two days or half a day in two days doing those Excel spreadsheet reports in the format that they wanted them because they don't make it easy, really, honestly. So it's definitely not charity. I, I, I promise you it isn't charity. You're going to work to get that money. And once you get that money, the reporting. Now, I'm just going to tell you a couple of things. Sure. If and, when you, if and when you do get a grant, make sure you do everything you say you're going to do and report it. And when, you, when you're done, you have to close that grant out, right? Now, understand, different agencies have different rules and regulations about uh, their grant and their cooperative agreement and they're closing out, right? So mm -hmm. and keep in mind, these, some of these may not be grants, they may be uh, cooperative agreements. So just, just remember the terminology, <clears throat> the difference between a grant and a cooperative agreement is the level of involvement by the federal government, okay? And yeah. I, would also, I would also tell you 
I would not stop there. I would look at states, uh, DOTs, and state highway <laughs> goals as, as contributors to this as well. Because okay. this, this is something that's going to benefit pretty much everybody. Okay, so um, that was an example of uh, one of the gentlemen that I helped uh, not too long ago just kind of understand the concept of grants and, and, and where to look and how to do that. Um, so there's many, many diverse types of projects and types of businesses that, um, that the government funds all the time. Um, and you'd be surprised at, at the, you know, at, at the variance. I mean, there's no everything, like I said, everything from small business to biomedical research, right? Um, there's going to be, and I don't know if folks know this or not, but um, there is the federal government spends more on grants and cooperative agreements than they do on contracts. And I know a lot of people will, will, will uh, ha ha that, but it is true. Um, everything that's ever been researched has pretty much been paid for with grant money. Um, so, and you can find that, that information is accurate. You can find it on uh, USA spending as well. Um, going back to there's no such thing as free money i i touched on that right before uh, we cut for the video or the audio clip and i i talked a little bit about that with uh with him the, the truth is is that everybody wants something and that's just a fact um if if you're going to get money they're going to want something in return it's either data or um like if it's a cooperative agreement they're going to be really involved in what you're doing if it's just grant money, they're going to just say, okay, here's the money, go forth, do great things, and then bring us back X, Y, Z. And um, I can't stress the importance of closing out correctly and doing everything that you tell them that you're going to do. They're going to want to know that, that you're not just taking that grant money and going to, you know, the auto car dealership and buying yourself a brand new Ferrari or, or Mercedes. You know, they want to know that you're using it for what you said you're going to use it for. It's like a, uh, an education grant. If you went and applied for uh, money for education and you took the money and went to the Bahamas on a nice long extended vacation, the government's going to want that money back. Um, but when while you're in the receipt of the grant, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, they're going to want to know your attendance record. They're going to want to know your grades, that kind of thing. Um, and grants don't tend to go to the most deserving. Let's, I don't want to dispense with that right now. They go to the one that has, the, that meets the criteria the best. Um, they set out a list of criteria that they're going to evaluate and decide, okay, you and you, um, we, we, want to, we want to accomplish this. We want all this soil cleaned up. And you two have come up with the best plan of getting this down to the um, contamination levels that we want. Or... Um, you guys have um, demonstrated through your, you know, your technical approach and your application how you're going to be able to um, do this research and and follow it through and be able to apply it to, to multi different uh, disciplines. So these are these are things that they're going to be looking for. Um, the truth of the matter is that although COVID was uh, kind of a it was a disaster in a lot of ways. It has provided some um, some tools and, and some greater opportunity for those who are innovative and those who are willing to look. Uh, the world is changing. Um, this isn't the this isn't the first pandemic that the world has ever faced, and it's not going to be the last. Now, uh, whatever your political beliefs are, are, are really don't count here that, because the idea. If, for me is to get you grant money to help you do whatever it is you want. But you got to look at things in a different way now. Um, you know, whether or not we're going to go back to masks or, you know, as a, as a full-time everything, I mean, you still have to wear them to fly. They just extended that for, I think, another 15 days. But um, you really have to start looking and thinking outside of the box. Well, what can I use some grant money to do and how can I, um, employ this money to do something that fits today's world. I mean, years ago it was, how are you going to utilize a computer and, and 
uh, software and technology and the internet to do that. Well, now you have another opportunity. <clears throat> Those who are in a position to, to utilize um, computers and software, uh, they, were, they were at the head of the game. Now you have an opportunity to be at the head of the game for, for the new innovation requirements, right? Um, things that, I mean, look at DoorDash, you know, all these things for delivery of food, uh, buying groceries and being able to have somebody just bring it out to your car. Um, innovation, innovation. I mean, they're looking at, they're looking outside of the box and they're saying, how can we actually take advantage of this and make more money? <clears throat> um, so where to go for available, sorry about that. It was my crutch. Um, where to go for available grants. Um, I don't know if Tyler can do a screen share, but, um, what I'd like to do is show you, um, the USA, let's see grants.gov website and just kind of show you a little bit around that and um and i want to cover some of the just some of the uh, different agencies just briefly because i want to show you that um they're um what they might want is going to be uh, going to vary depending on the, the particular agency okay i'm going to click this and okay um, i'm gonna, I'm not sure if folks can see this, but um, actually that's not what I want. Well, how do I do this, Tyler? You're the tech. Hey, guy. Owen. Yes, sir. Uh, apologies to the audience. We're still getting our training wheels uh, time in on this, uh, you know, the backstage technology stuff. Um, Olin, did something pop up on your screen regarding sharing? I have a start share. I have a start sheen screen share, but it shows okay. something else. You know what? Um, since I'm supposed to be helping you do the screen share, let me now that I'm added to the scene, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, I, I'm gonna pull it up here. Okay, here we go. I got it. So you just walk them through it, and I will do my best to keep up with you. Okay, so um, search grants, this is where you're gonna go. You're gonna click on the search grants screen. And rather than go by any of these uh, three in the basic search criteria, go down and just kind of look at the, um, look at the eligibility, city or township, governments, county, for-profit, individuals. And this is where most folks are gonna, gonna fall. But, um, and we cover in, in, our, in our paid, um, our paid sessions, we cover uh, teaming and um, and creating a, a joint venture and, th and those types of things because oftentimes a, um, a a joint venture will get you where you need to go, whereas um, trying to do it by yourself won't. Uh, most of these agencies are smart enough to realize that it's very difficult for one person to run a business. It's very, very difficult. Um, I own, I had a friend one time who owned a small business and he says, you know, it's true. You can work anytime you want, as long as you want to work all the time. So, and that's pretty true. Um, so anyways, there's all the eligibility things. And these are the things that, um, that I would spend five minutes and eliminate you from the, you know, from even being considered along with all of the databases that you have to, you're required to be registered in. And um, if you're not registered in those, if you don't have the right uh, EIN numbers, you don't have the right um, entity identifiers, you're not gonna get a grant. You're not gonna get a cooperative agreement and you're not gonna get a contract because the government has to have that information and it's a database that you plug all the stuff into. They have to have that information in order to make sure that they're tracking uh, what's been done, who's doing it, because that's their only tool to really monitor other than the direct monitoring, which is something else we go into in the, in the courses. Now, if you go down here to category, this is the one I kind of really wanted to touch bases on, um, and the agencies. So, like, let's suppose that you were, you were interested in opening up a, a consultation um um, you, you want to, you know, consult with small businesses, right? Um, you could look at business and commerce, 
community development because at the end of the day, if you're if you're working for um, within your community, that's going to assist your community. And, and these are all things that will also help you provide more funding uh, sources because local folks are going to want to help. Um, and, uh, you know, and, th and then there's the small business and um, it might be employment, labor and training. You might look at uh, all these are different categories, right? Now then when you start going to the agencies, this is where this is where you um, find multiple federal agencies to assist and some of the different things that they might want from you. Um, let's suppose that you got one from the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Defense. And I'm just going to I'm just going to throw a couple of possibilities out there for just these two and the things that the government would want. Suppose that the federal the Department of Defense has a, uh, a military installation and they have soldiers and airmen and uh, Marines and uh, seamen stationed on on that installation. Well, um, they might decide that um, for the sake of um, for local um, support as well as supporting of the of the installation, the immediate installation, that they might want to. <clears throat> Uh, clear out an area that's um, maybe slightly contaminated and they might want somebody to come in and clean that out, out to utilize it the following year as as a method to grow, um, uh, you know, grow produce or something to, or, or even farming or something of that nature. Well, then you also, uh, because I mentioned um, contaminated soil, you might also look at the possibility of the EPA. Um, and that's down here. I think it's um, like number ten, Environmental Protection Agency. But um, this is these are just ways. That, this is the place that you're going to go, and these are these are ways you have to think of outside of the box to um, to try to get as many different uh, funding sources as you can. The, the bottom line is is you have an idea, you want to run with that idea, but it takes some money to do that. And I think with that, that's going to kind of, um, if you want to close that share screen, Tyler, and let's do some okay. Q&A, because I think that pretty well covers uh, the majority of what I had uh, had wanted to cover. Okay, let's move okay. this over. I'll make you the star again. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay, I don't see any questions. Sure. Sure. Okay. So <clears throat> that question is, I'm going to need some interactive feedback for that particular question. Here's why. Um, if you're just wanting to help all small businesses of, of any kind of nature to um, to just kind of get up and running, um, yeah, you would go you would go through the small business administration. But if but here's the here's the little kicker that, that could help you um, and maybe even help whoever it is that you're uh, consulting with. You put in for um, let's suppose that they want to do, and I'm just going to throw this out there because it's you know we kind of discussed, we kind of touched on a little bit. Let's suppose that um, there's a small company that's interested in doing environmental restoration, right? Well, it's a small business, and you want to help them get off the ground. Well, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for you to do something called teaming or joint venture with them, um, and try to get uh, dollars to help you open up your small consulting business firm where and if you have a specialty that you work in, it's going to it's going to make it easier for you over the process, but it's also going to more narrowly tailor everything you can do. But if you if you assist them in getting a grant and you do the grant through the small business, you do a small business through the SBA, Small Business Administration, and you get them to help you fund your small business itself. And then you assist the, you know, the new company coming online um, and getting a grant to do. Um, environmental restoration through the EPA, then what that does is it, it helps you understand the process through the EPA, plus you can assist them in getting the grant for the EPA. In addition to that, it also gives you kind of a, 
a specialty that you could work for later on in the future to help um, you know other companies that are looking to do environmental restoration. Now, the the nice thing about environmental restoration is it's everywhere. I mean, soil is contaminated everywhere. I mean, anywhere anywhere they've had fuel, anywhere they've had any kind of chemicals, anything like that, even even near medical facilities, bio biohazards, right? So um, these are all areas that you could go through and look at that um, as an opportunity to specialize um, in that particular field. But you can also open it up further. You know, let's suppose that um, you have somebody who wants to do a cooperative agreement with the Department of Defense. Okay, well, what is the Department of Defense looking to do? Well, they, um, the Department of Defense, of course, is looking to um, defend the country they 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 need technology they and these are going to be kind of hard to get but they do have them i've seen some um they actually had one for individual id not long ago because they're they're trying to tap uh dna to utilize as a as an identification mechanism now how how you feel about that um that's up to you but the, you know th these are some dollars are out there for that particular uh that particular application um, there's also agriculture. Let's face it, you know, um, even the, even the folks in the current administration are saying, yes, there is going to be food shortages. And so you could help a small business get up online on uh, doing agriculture. And they also have, um, they have block grants, they have individual grants, they have community grants, and then they have state grants. And, and, and as far, and also, um, uh, trying to remember the name of it it's uh where a gentleman has a lot of money and he's um uh, yeah it's a private grant but the i i keep wanting to say anthropologist and that's not right um it's got to be the pain meds but anyways i think what it uh what it comes down to is there's so many different sources and with the food shortages coming up there's an opportunity that you could get um, a grant to assist either a local farmer or, or even do it, go into farming yourself. Um, or, but consulting is important because a consultant helps people prevent making mistakes. Um, ex, uh, mistakes can be expensive. They're very costly, uh, not just in terms of money, but also time. I mean, you know, some of these are time sensitive. You have to apply for this particular grant or that particular grant by this deadline. And if folks are spinning their wheels and they're not, you know, they're not able to, you know, grasp everything, then um, it makes it really, really difficult. And it can, um, it can put somebody out of, uh, out of business for another year. You know, they might be, you know, if they're, if they have their heart and mind set on this one particular uh, function, this one particular um, goal, then at the end of the day, if they're if they're held back, they don't have somebody to help them uh, cross these I, uh, cross these T's and dot these I's. Um, it can be very costly. And yes, sir. It can, or you can just do the general small business. So where I was going with that, if you're just wanting to just do small business consulting, then then basically all you're going to really be doing is helping them develop their their business model, their business plan, um, get their tax ID number stuff in order, um, and, and how far you go along with that. I don't know if you're going to assist them in developing a payroll application, personnel application. Um, you're consulting you have to decide in, in what it is that you're going to consult, what your consulting business is going to do. You have to decide exactly what it is that you're, um, that you're going after. Are you just going after trying to get somebody up off the, you know, onto the, on, in the, in the small business, or are you trying to help them uh, seek a, spe a specific, uh, you know, function in that business, which means more money available, but then you specialize. So I hope that answers your question. Does that help Tyler? Eric, are you?
Okay. Yeah. Someone in my position. Okay, so here's, I'm just gonna give you a real quick overview of the process. The process is um, typically an agency either needs something, wants something, or has money to accomplish some type of a goal. And they put that, uh, they put that out there on the public forum in, in the way of what's called a NOFO, Notice of Funding Opportunity, or just a FOA, Funding Opportunity Announcement, right? So then the public, the folks like you will say, you know what? This fits into exactly what I want to do, or, or not exactly, but I can be creative and creatively write it to get what I want, right? So it will, your application will consist of multiple um, most, multiple documents. And in some of those documents are the business, uh, the business portion, which is that's the, that's the number one gatekeeper you got to pass. And that's where I would eliminate. And I'm going to go into a little bit of this right here. Um, that's where I would eliminate about uh, 65 to 90 percent of, of applicants um, right off the bat. If the federal government, the, the folks working in the federal government, like myself, like I used to, we don't operate in a vacuum. We, we have rules and regulations that we must follow. Congress sets it forth and, you know, we must comply with those rules. That's a condition of the, of the funding. So in that you're required, I'm required to make sure that you have, you're registered in, in multiple databases, that you have all of the applicable tax a business license, a tax ID number, employee, an, an employer identification number, uh, an entity identification number, and these all go through um, a database. and And I will give you more of that if you if you join our, um, you know, if, our, if you join our uh, our program. But in addition to the um, in addition to that, the next phase of it after I after I go through and I and I review all of the information that you provide me on the business end, the next thing I do is I will take that and there, oh, let me go back to the reason why I disqualify folks right away. Because it doesn't make sense to have the technical experts review packets that have no chance of getting awarded. If you're not in these, if you're not uh, registered in these databases, by law, I cannot, um, I can't make the award to you by law. So it doesn't make sense to send all that, that whole entire packet up there so that they can look and see how good you are or, or what your ideas are if you have if you stand zero chance of getting the award um so i eliminate you right there then but what happens is those who have made it past that first gate get sent up to the technical experts the technical experts in addition to the actual customer themselves because typically speaking the um the technical experts work for the customer because the customer is the one who says what's most important, and I'm going to touch on that. Um, if schedule is more important, then how quickly you can get it uh, is is what I'm looking for. If price is what's important, well, I don't really care how uh, you know how quick you can get it or the quality. I, I, price is what's most important. Or if it's the quality, hey, we can take as long as we need, and we'll pay as much for it as we need, but we need the Rolls Royce here. So so then there's that. And then so the technical experts will take and they'll review your technical proposal. This is where you lay out what it is you're going to do, how you're going to do it, the metrics you're going to assign to it, why you're doing it that way, and, and any kind of past performance that you have that shows that, that your method is successful, um, has been successful in the past. That's where that's it's going to be really important. And one other thing I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to caution you and I, and I will caution you further uh, if you join the program. And that is don't just parrot the announcement. Don't do it. If you these things, your your proposals and your applications are read. People read. the. That's why it takes a long time to do a lot of the stuff that the government does, but they're reading it. Um, when you put something down there. We look at it and if all you did was just parrot exactly what we put out there, you're not going to get it. You know, we're going to know that you're just saying, yeah, you, you can do this, you can do that, you can, but you're not telling us how. You're not telling us uh, the way you're going to, you know, who you're going to bring on, what kind of experts, um, what kind of, what kind of people, um, you know, does, if you want to, if you're wanting to do a business consultant, 
Um, do you have any, uh, do you have any history or experience in business? Have you ever successfully um, had a business of your own? Have you, um, have you ever successfully counseled anybody on how to get a business? Um, and these aren't, these aren't necessarily deal killers because all, you know, some of these are not entry level, but some of them are entry level. And like the small business administration, they do a lot of entry level type stuff. Well, and once the technical expert uh, reviews it, they send it over to the customer and they say, okay, and they don't give, they don't tell who it is that, they, you know, that proposed this, but they say, okay, um, entity X, Y, and Z says they can do this. Entity X can't do that, but they can do this. And, and they'll send it over to the customer. The customer will decide um, if that meets their needs and their goals. And the customer will send it back to the technical expert. The technical expert will um, will make a recommendation to the contracting officer or the grants officer in my case, and uh, they'll send it to me and they'll make a recommendation. I go back to it. I make sure that all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed. You meet all the business uh, requirements and that you're not disqualified or disbarred somehow, some way you don't owe the government money from back taxes. Uh, you weren't uh, in prison for you know some kind of a federal offense. Uh, you're not a traitor. Uh, you know, just the basic things that we're looking for to make sure that we don't get a black eye by giving you federal funding when you're, um, you know, you belong to the Soviet or not the Soviet, but you belong to China. So um, I think that should pretty much answer your question, Tyler. Well, um, they're going to know if you're BSing them. I mean, if that's what you're asking me, um, they're going to, like I said, they have technical experts that work in this field and they're going to know, they're going to go, they're going to look at it and they're going to say, well, this guy says that he can, you know, uh, he can drive a truck across, you know, the Atlantic ocean, you know, and not sink. Well, you know, without some kind of other, flotation devices, you're probably not going to do that, right? So um, they're going to know. Okay, and so that's why it's really important to have a real good business, um, a, a business plan and a um, and, you know, the nice thing about, like, if you're going to start out and you're going to work with the SBA, they have people that will help you. They have people that will help guide you through um, each and every uh, single aspect of this, right? But you're going to have to do, um, you're going to have to do your due diligence in looking at um, at the possibilities, at the, at the um, whether or not it's more appropriate that you team up with somebody, create a joint venture, or if you have multiple people, and to be honest with you, if you have multiple people and you're wanting to and you're wanting to start out with small business stuff, that's what I recommend, um, because that way they know that the more people that are involved, um, that's why. Let me let me just finish this one thought. Um, the more people that are involved, they know the more likely you are to um, continue. You're not going to just say throw up your hands and say, oh, "Well, you know, it didn't work right. Today's Monday. I'm done." Um, and the same reason, like if you, uh, in law, I don't know if anybody out there has any legal background, but the term cahoots is, um, it holds a lot of water because they know that when there's, when there's more than one, um, you're more likely to follow through. And so there's extra penalties for, um, you know, conspiracy type stuff. So, um, I hope that answers the questions. Are there any more questions out there? Please feel free to ask.
what are you talking about, Tyler? So um, just just real quick, I want to let everybody know I'm not I'm not a technical guru. I'm the guy who knows grants. I know them. I know grants. I know cooperative agreements. And I know contracts. The technical stuff I don't know. That's why when I worked for the government, I had experts who who do this, and that's why Tyler's here because he does this kind of stuff. And uh, we're, we're this is our first. This is our first live uh, Q and A, and on the interest of transparency, the knowledge is still here. I mean, you're getting the same. You're getting a good value. Trust me, because you just don't find too many people that have done what I've done on the other side of the fence with the knowledge that I have. That's willing and able to help you, and that's just the facts. There you go. Okay, um, let me pull that up. I have that here. So, um, you know, I think I think at this point, Tyler, I'm going to let you. I'd like for you to do some of this. My 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 basic um, my basic thought on this is I want to I want to assist as many folks as I can um, to get past the lions that are guarding the money and my best, the best thing I can do for that, for you guys is to avail myself as much as possible to things like Q and a um, going through the process and showing you uh, what I'm, what I'm kind of hoping to put together here is a, um, a school where folks can, can go and they can log in at their convenience um, and they can look at um they can look at the modules and say, okay, well, this covers um, grants, uh, grants.gov, and this one covers the application, and this one covers so that um, because not everybody has the same hours, and rather than do these live, um, I would like to avail myself as much as I can to answering specific detailed questions that cut to the cut to the chase and cut to the heart of what you're you're wanting to do. Um, and did, did that cover what you're talking about, Tyler? I'm not real sure. I've been working on diligently for the last couple of months because Olin wants to make this knowledge and information more accessible to 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 everybody. Um, until I met Olin, I never considered applying for a grant, and I suspect there's a lot of people out there who've never considered it as a potential funding source for their project or idea that carries with it a real social benefit. And that's the kind of thing that Olin educated me. Um, these grants are earmarked for, for things that have a social benefit. And um, so let me tell you about this uh, academy that we're setting up. It's a multi-course, it, it's gonna be a multiple module course. Uh, think of it like a boot camp for putting your ideas to paper and then successfully navigating the grants application process. Olin is going to ride sidecar with you the entire way. And his mission has never deviated from when he and I started talking from making the process as straightforward and as simple as can be for people, something that it is currently not. Most people simply don't consider grants as an available funding source, and it's not unheard of for successful grant applications to be authored by people who've done it many times before, from what I understand. Now, this is this is where we want to take all you know the knowledge from those people who've successfully applied for many grants and bring it to you. Um. I, I kind of want to interject something. You, you know, you you hit it spot on. That's absolutely that's absolutely right. 
Um, I kind of get lost in a little bit of this, and here's why. Because um, my history and my background, I don't even think of the idea that somebody didn't consider a grant for, you know, for money, for a money funding source, right? I mean, I, I just automatically assume that everybody thinks, yeah, let's get some grant money, right? So Tyler's right. Um, I, I kind of go right to the, well, yeah, of course, you should know that you can get a grant. They're out there. You know, the government is providing, you know, $700 trillion this year. And, you know, and I don't, I don't know that, I don't know what the numbers are at this point, but uh, it's a lot of, a lot of money um, just for grants and cooperative agreements. So, um, yeah. And look, Tyler, uh, going back to the clip that we played earlier from Josh, you know, you, you opened his eyes to the grant as a viable funding source for him. And you, um, part of the uh, part of the stuff that we didn't include in the clip was Olin pointing out the specific agencies that would maybe apply or that he could apply to for grant funding in his business scenario. And that's a that's a real key. Every every one of every one of um, your. Um, your grant applications is going to be unique. Every, you know, every, everybody has a different, um, you might have even, you might even have some of the same kind of basic ideas, but everybody has their own little uh, sidebar. And these are, these are where it's real helpful to have somebody like me to kind of help you. Okay. Yeah, this is important, but also consider this. Yeah. So, um, and Tyler has done a great job uh, keeping me, you know, on the, you know, doing all the technical stuff. And, um, you know, I keep telling them, like, you know, Tyler, I realize that, uh, you know, these platform changes are simple for you, but they're not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and, you know, he's really good at that stuff. And um, and I think we've put together a winning team. What, what uh, our team is here to do is to transport what is in your brain to anybody who wants to consider looking to grant sources as a way to help their project or idea see the light of day. Because right. that's what we're that's what we're all here for, right? We all have dreams. We all have communities of people that we're passionate about. We all have um, it personal interests and passions. And I think that most of us have seen one or more ways to improve the world. Well, that's what the grant money is there for. And in our course, in, in our academy experience that we're putting together, you're going to get Olin, for one, the guy who, he's the man, he's the guy who's been there for 30 plus years on the other side of the transaction, but he was held back from saying and giving all the advice that he wanted to give because of conflict of interest type stuff, um, he's not bound anymore. And so you can not only get Olin, but you can get all of Olin. And these, you're gonna learn uh, from behind the scenes why these decisions are made so you can avoid the pitfalls that so many folks make. Uh, there are other there are other people out there selling courses, claiming to be experts in the grants application process that have never written a successful grant application, nor have they worked in the industry. And that's where Olin is special and unique. And remember, he's not just someone that wrote grant applications. He's the one who authorized and obligated the government to provide the applicants the funding. Yeah. Um absolutely spot on um and you know we're going to go into more detail on uh, teaching you the differences between a grant and a cooperative agreement and a contract because some of some of your um some of your interests might um might sway more towards a contract or a cooperative agreement rather than a grant um and and i i implore you don't rule out any of those things because they're all uh they all make uh, good money and um and they're invaluable uh and and they're not just a one-time draw you can get them multiple times so 
uh, keep your mind open uh, open to that. Um, there's many advantages sometimes to, to that kind of stuff. And we're going to teach you uh, some of the hidden nuggets um, to put in your application to to help you stay out of the you know out of the file 13 um, arena right away. So so that you at least have a chance to if you can get your application to the technical expert, you have come miles. Trust me, because that is that's huge. Because then the technical expert is going to look at what you actually are saying, and you. You've got to get by me. I'm the I'm the I'm the linebacker here. I'm the guy that's going to try to keep you from getting you know back there. So, um, what are some of the other secrets in the academy that might take folks five or ten years to learn on their own? Oh, good lord! There's so many. <laughs> um, one is, you know, you can spend hours and hours and hours looking for a grant. Well, I'm going to teach you how to put in the specific type of number that you're looking for to, to seek out that or how to ferret through the agencies. The agencies is huge. That's, um, we kind of just bear, we just, you know, skim the surface on that, but um, we'll go through the agencies and you'll get a chance to see um, that like the department of agriculture, they don't just do just uh, crops, right? They, they do multiple things and they have multiple interests and they work hand in hand a lot of times with multiple agencies. So um, it's there's going to be a lot of things that I'm going to teach you that will get your application to the technical expert and the more important or equally as important to the right technical expert, to the to the folks that are looking at what you now I, I want to make this. I want to make a disclaimer right here. There is no way that I can guarantee you that you're going to get a grant. It's not possible. And, and I'm just going to put this out there. Here's why. There are so many different variables and so many different possibilities that it would be literally impossible to do it. Um, first of all, the, the contracting and grants officer has a lot of authority. Um, they have, um, if they don't like, let's suppose that they heard from someone else that your company uh, does really poor work, really shoddy work. They don't even have to look at your package. They don't because all they have to do is say, personal experience tells me that this company is not, is, isn't worth looking into. So that's number one. Um, that's not a deal killer because there's, there's so many agencies and so many different places you can still get money, right? Um, there's also the possibility that uh, if you, um, if you put in for something last time and you, you really did a, a poor job in your application that they can say, well, you know, we're going to just do a, a cursory review. And if you have basically the same information there, they're not even going to review it. Um, I also don't know how much of my information you're going to put, put to use and put to practice. Um, I don't know if you're going to, um, how, how much you're going to follow me in hand in hand. Plus things change. They may have an, an announcement for, Hey, we want to we want to give ten million dollars to somebody to do X, and so you know we work hand in hand together. We get this application, and all of a sudden they pull the money, they yank it back, and they say, "Well, we either need it for a higher priority project, or that's no longer the socioeconomic goal that we want to achieve. We now want to we're now looking at you know uh, reducing obesity in you know areas that are have a lot of sedentary children, you know, cold right." right? So, um, but long story short, you're going to help maximize their chances of approval. Absolutely. Help, um, help minimize their chances of being eliminated in the first round or subsequent reviews. And, um, with our, yeah, with our course, you're going to, you're going to have a much, much greater chance than without it. I mean, you know, people, people spend years and decades aids trying to learn the process that I'm going to show you how to cut all that time off. Um, you're going to have a much better chance of getting a grant than somebody who doesn't take this course. That's just a fact. Um, your, your chances are going to increase exponentially. Um, and I'm this does the, the content of the course doesn't just cover um, federal grants, right? The, it also applies to 
state and local and even private in many cases? Most of the information will be, um, so everything that I'm going to teach you is utilized in the federal arena, but most state and city funding agencies also follow these same principles and guidelines because they're already established. Um, and oftentimes the, the dollars that they're getting are from the federal government. So there's flow down requirements from the federal government. Um, and then you have private sector companies and they have also learned through bitter experience that um, why, re why reinvent the wheel when this one's already established and they kind of get what they want. They, um, even a private entity that's going to help you with something, they're going to want something in return. Um, it's not going to be free money. They're going to want something, um, a pat on the back, a public display of their business sign. Right. Philanthropist is the word I was looking for before. Okay. Um, and so I'm, I'm also going to teach you, um, whether or not you should be looking for a funding opportunity announcement or a solicitation. Um, and once you make the decision as to which direction you want to go, contract grant cooperative agreement, um, I'm going to show you how to get uh, your proposal started and submitted for review. Um, and on a case by case basis for an additional fee, I can make sure that you're not eliminated in the first round by going through and uh, verifying rather than just telling you uh, what to do. I can go through and I can verify that you're registered in all the proper databases. You have all the um, so this is a check and balance thing, right? Um, I can tell you how to do it and where to do it, or you can pay me and I'll go through and I'll make sure that, because I know the databases that I'm going to check. I know what I'm going to check for. I know how I'm going to check it. And I know the order in which I'm going to check it because, you know, 90% of those that don't get past me fail in at this particular database, 30% uh, fail in this and then 10% this. I'm looking to disqualify you as quickly as possible because it makes less work for everyone. Yeah. So uh, my goal, my goal here is to make sure that you don't get eliminated that quickly. Um, it, it, it sounds like you're there to, sh I mean, in, in that case, to shorten the distance between today and their outcome, whatever the outcome is going to be of their grant application. Between application and funding. For them, cut out, you know, accelerate the process, cut out a bunch of, you know, uh, obstacles and headaches that may be involved. From frustration to funding quicker than before, right? Yeah. Um, and like I said, or I can just show you all the secrets to help keep you from being eliminated, which there's benefits on both sides. One is I know that I'm not going to miss a step because I've done it for years and years and years. So I know exactly where I'm going to check and what I'm going to check. But the advantage to, to you learning how to do it is so that you can apply it over and over and over. Now, there are some times you might want to you want you might want me to teach you how to do it and then uh, and then pay me also to go back through and make sure. That way you can verify that you did all the work that you're supposed to do. I go back and I double check it. And then next time you don't need me, you don't need to pay me to do the, do the back checking for you. You'll have that down. Right. Um, we're going to show you how to locate local funding sources. And those funding sources oftentimes are through block grants. Um, like let, let's go through the department of agriculture, right? The department of agriculture is a federal agency, but they have, um, they have the entire United States and all the areas that are occupied by the United States. They have to they have to deal with right, and um, there's food shortages in all those places. There's um, transportation issues. There's you know all kinds of uh, all kinds of things that they have to look at. Um, but sometimes what will happen is the federal government, like the um, Department of Agriculture, may say, okay. Uh, we're going to go to the state department of agriculture or whoever whatever state entity you have that's you know that deals in the same parallel lines as the federal department of agriculture they may say okay we're going to give these guys a 50 million dollar grant to do what we want done and they're going to handle that in that state so now you go back to what i was telling you before there's a lot of block grants so those dollars have flow down uh, contract and um and grants clauses one of the things is real quick, although a grant and a cooperative agreement are not a contract, they create something called a, con a contractual relationship. So 
you're being given funding to do what you said you would do and you're on the hook to do that um and you can be terminated for convenience you can be terminated for default um, and the government can come back after you for the money that they gave you plus they can also come back after you for what's called reprocurement costs so when you do get the money make sure that you do what you say you're going to do that's i can't i can't stress that enough yeah and it seems uh, especially when dealing with the government there may be a lot of um uh requirements and regulations that come into play that your average person doesn't know about but you can help people navigate those requirements and regulations and and i will do that i will show you the number one um, regulation that is required by all the the u.s congress passed it it's uh it's a requirement that's the regulation that all agencies must comply with and I will show you that one and teach you a little bit about that one. Um, every every individual agency also has um, director uh, style initiatives. Those are things that, um, because of that specific agency's charter, they don't fall outside of that particular regulation, but they have to make additional regulations that focus on their mission, their particular individual mission. Um, where you're going to be. Um, yeah, you, like I said, you'll be introduced to the to that specific uh, regulation and, and all of its facets, including something else, cost accounting. I mean, you're going to have to you're going to have to maintain um, some sort of a record that says that shows where those dollars go. Um, the federal government's going to want to know. You know, they're going to want to know, like if it was for education, did did you spend that on tuition? Did you spend on books, mm -hmm. uh, dorm, transportation, uh, meals? You know. The government looks at all that because they're giving you a pretty good amount of money and they want to know how it was spent and you will tell them in your application how you're going to spend it and then you're going to back it up by showing that um, one other thing i want to just cover real quick if you if you um if you expend more than seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of federal grant or cooperative agreement money in one year you're required to do an audit um, Keeping in mind, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in one year is a lot of money, but you know, if if the business thing is right, and that, you know, if the business model is right, and that's what it takes, then that's probably what you're going to expend. So you have to include. If you say that you're going to do it for seven hundred eighty thousand dollars, go ahead and add the audit into the cost because it's going to be a requirement, right? And you have to spread those costs out. And I'm going to teach you the regulation to look for how to spread those costs out legally allowable allocable um so these are all things that you're gonna have you will learn in our course um, this is all part of a process and you're gonna help them through the process from a to z to the very end when they close out their grant yeah As and, I'm also gonna, and i'm also and i'm and i'm also going to show them um things to avoid uh, you know, yeah. there's, like I said, one of, the, one of the key things I mentioned right up front was parroting the, the announcement. Don't do it. And there's other things that you need to avoid. Um, don't, don't hound the, you know, don't call the grants officer and the contracting officer every hour or two. Hey, what's the status on your, you know, pretty soon he's, they're going to say, well, you know, we had to put you at the bottom of the file, right? So yeah. these are all things. Um, Anyways, there's a, there's a whole lot more that you're going to learn. Uh, I'm just going to go through this real quick. Um, you're going to see other federal, uh, what, what federal agencies are offering grants. You're going to explore them from state to local. You're going to look through private stuff. Um, you're going to learn how to, you know, see the, the grants application as a process to, to maximize your success. Um, and uh, how to successfully close it out and what the different reporting requirements are that will be expected. Uh, we do this uh, twice a month. This was our pre-launch. Well, this was kind of our pre-launch, but um, at that point, I think I'm gonna let Tyler take it because uh, I've given you kind of the details of what I do. Okay, so um, I, I, I will take it away in a moment. I apologize. I got a question from an audience member that I want to make sure we can address before we close up the call. I got it via text. So um, again, I apologize for just noticing it. 
The question is, have you, Olin, approved or denied any grants for the USFWS? No, I don't know what that is. Yes, Fish, Wild, Fish and Wildlife Services. Yes, I have. Um, okay. Some of them by proxy and some of them directly. Um, so the Fish and Wildlife Services, we worked uh, very, very closely with to, um, in Alaska, uh, Fish and Wildlife Services is a huge, a huge thing. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to cover real quickly on what that particular, what, what one of them that stick in my mind were. Um, we had a, a river that started or that, you know, would, would flow from downtown in, in the city through the military installation and then back into the city again. Right. So the fish and wildlife service wanted to make sure that we are training those and impacting the fish. We don't want contaminated fish going downtown, like, you know, into another area and, you know, the fish poisoning and killing somebody or them growing a third arm out of their ear or something like that. Uh, the other thing is, is um, no diminished uh, quality or quantity, right? So we don't want tanks running through this river and, and, you know, destroying uh, the ability for them to spawn and that kind of thing. So, um, what we had to do is we gave a grant to a soil and soil and water conservation group and they came in and they 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 viewed it they said okay well there you know there are some risks here um but these are the things we can do to mitigate it one was uh do a, a non um it was a bridge that was made out of uh, non-environmentally corrosive and toxic materials so that but it had to be strong enough that tanks could go over and, and you know, regular equipment. So yes, I have done uh, grants and cooperative agreements for the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, mostly by proxy. That, that was a very detailed answer. I hope that um, I hope that's a satisfactory answer to the person who asked. It actually echoes a personal story of mine. My first and only exposure to grants before I met Olin was um, my grandfather, who is a engineer. He was, he's been an engineer his whole life. He had to apply to what I assume is the um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Agency to widen a river on some uh on some land that he owned and his neighbors owned and this is in northern new mexico and he wanted he he successfully got uh the grant to widen the river in order to um in order to save the fish in it yeah so that is interesting that you used the same the, the, the one and only example I have from my life prior to meeting you to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are important things. They're important to the community. I mean, you yeah. know, like in Alaska, the community, a lot of those people, they live off of fish, you know, and, and I'm not talking about like little tiny fish. I'm talking about big salmon, like, my screen yeah. big enough, but, you know, um, eight to 10 to 12 pound salmon uh, and, that's important, you know, some people's livelihood, not to mention recreation. Um, recreation is big too, yeah. yeah. And it keeps kids out of trouble. I mean, let's face it, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're stuck nowadays. We have kids are stuck on these things and, you know, parents are more and more trying to get them off of screen time and trying to get them to, you know, to do something. Get, you know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, punishment was if I couldn't go outside. It was like, do your homework or you're not going to go outside. What? 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 Yeah. Now it's like now, now it's like you tell them if you don't do your homework, I'm going to make you go outside. Oh, okay. I'll, you know, it's like so. Um, yeah, you know, recreation is a great um, alternative for yeah. young kids who yeah. uh, are Keeps trying to trouble. trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I learn something new every time I talk to you, Olin. I hope that our audience members enjoyed this call and got a lot out of it. We do have many planned standalone learning modules in our academy. We're also going to make ourselves available like we're doing today to answer specific questions about your um, 
about your situation um, pretty regularly, twice a month on these more free form Q and A's. That way students, that way students, um, and, and by the way, students of the academy, they're gonna get access to Olin every time we do this, okay? Some of you uh, paid for a ticket to be here today. As a student of the academy, you will have uh, access to all of these live Q and A's with Olin. And um, we do, um, we plan to launch the academy pretty soon here. We have a pre-launch special pricing that we will email to you after the call if you would like to take a closer look at what uh, what all is involved in that. And um, we're also working on doing some group pricing. We'll have more information and details about that coming soon. In addition so like to I that, said, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, in addition to that, we're gonna, um, for those who join, we're gonna give them a, um, a list of each uh, agency direct link to the individual agencies that are providing the grants and you can go and kind of review their mission their charter see if it fits with what you and it's you know it makes it easier rather than having to try to find the link and i mean this way you just click yeah. on it and, and you just move right on down the down the cycle so um we want to make it as easy for you guys as possible because the truth of the matter is, is there's a lot of money going to a lot of folks that why not you yeah and, that's the bottom line right there yeah. well Sincerely, from both of us to our audience, thank you for joining us on the call today. It's been a pleasure talking to Olin again, and I know that I personally am going to keep learning from him. I want everybody in the audience to know that we appreciate your time. Time is money, and we don't take it for granted that you are here today to listen to what Olin has to say, and maybe open your eyes or expand your horizons about a um, way to get your project or idea off the ground that you maybe hadn't considered so much before. And because you are here today, we're going to send you an email after the call directing you where to find out more and sign up if you like to the U.S. Grants Academy at a special pre-launch price because you are here today also you're going to automatically be invited to the next q a um, session that we do together unless you want to opt out and you can just tell me by email if you're good yeah. so um olin any closing thoughts before we end the call no um i just hope people understand that uh, now's the time to be innovative uh you know mm. right now is a it's it's perfectly ripe it's time to go go after the the new things because it's a changing world and yeah those who are pre-positioned for it are going to be in a, a, a lot better shape well said better, better to be uh, ahead of the game than trying to react to it so yeah. with that i'm good i hope uh, i hope everyone enjoyed it i hope you guys learned something um uh, I hope that you guys will uh, continue to go through this and uh, and give me an opportunity to help you get some money to do something that you've uh, you've either wanted to do for a long time or maybe something that just now came into maybe something that was revealed to. I mean, uh, the gentleman that you heard the clip from um, sometimes just by like uh, bouncing it off somebody, it can help you come up with, hey, you know what? I thought about this a while ago, and this might actually so. Just possibilities, um, yeah. kind of open and broaden your horizons. And for me to you, Olin, uh, thank you for make for making the time out of your recovery. Those who were here at the beginning of the call heard that um, you you'd recently had some, you know, uh, uh, medical attention, and uh, I know that you're in recovery mode. Thanks, thanks again for doing this and making the time for our audience to help um, open their eyes and clarify and be a resource for them. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely.
Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. I appreciate all your technical expertise, dude, because without you, <laughs> I'd, be, pleasure, um, I'd, I'd be trying to do it on video and sending, you know, VHS. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, with that, guys, uh, we're going to be doing this again. You can, uh, this isn't the last you've seen of us. You're going to see a lot more of us, but Olin's got to, uh, Olin's probably got to make some, make himself some lunch and, and, uh, you probably have things that you want to attend to on your Saturday too. Thanks again, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Take care.